Hey everyone, welcome to Wildlife Inspired. I'm your host, Scott Keys. Today, a quick software review on the updates or upgrades made to Camera Raw and Lightroom. I'm gonna apply it specifically to what I do with wildlife photography or bird photography, but I just wanna do a real quick summary of some of these changes and hopefully you'll find this interesting and I'll show you where to find those changes and which ones I have found to be the most helpful in just a minute. <music> Recently, uh, Adobe made some changes and upgrades, updates to their software, and they did it for Photoshop, they did it for Bridge, and they did it for Lightroom and Camera Raw. Now, this is October 2021. It's kind of hot off the presses if you're watching this. I've played with it for just a day, and there was one feature that I found really uh, useful for me as a wildlife photographer, and I wanted to point that out and show you a little bit of the differences in the interface, how it looks, and how it behaves, and hopefully you'll take something away from it. So. Without any further ado, let me pull up the new interface and I'll show you a couple of subtle changes. Now you're looking at cam the camera raw interface. This is what I use the most. Um, the, the engine behind Lightroom's develop mode and Adobe Camera Raw editor, it's the same thing. So if you, if you go back and forth, the interfaces look almost identical and the features are the same and the engine is identical. So. I'm gonna show you in uh, Camera Raw what the, where these changes are. I wanna bring your attention, if you're used to using uh, Camera Raw, on the right-hand side, you're gonna notice a couple things are actually missing now. So the brush tool is gone, the gradient tool is gone, I think they might've called it the graduated filter, and then the, um, the radial filter is gone. Now they're still there, they're just in a different place. And what the focus has been on with this upgrade is really around the, the ability to create masks easier and so this button right here, I'll hover over it and it should bring up, let me see if I can bring up the little masking information for you. Uh, it may not, okay, it doesn't look like it's gonna pull it up, but that little button, it's a third button down, is the new mask feature. And when you click on that, what you're gonna see now underneath it is brush, linear gradient, and radial gradient. So those are new, uh, they're not new, they're in a new position in the menu, so this is where you're gonna find them now. And I was kind of curious, there's a new feature called Select Subject. I was kind of curious, how well does this work? So I took an image that I was working on. I'm gonna show you this with two, and we're gonna see how well it does. Now this one, it actually did, it's one click. It, it'll you know do a little math, run a little algorithm, try to determine the subject, and there it is. It did include, in this case, uh, some of these little berries below it, but the edges were really, I was actually surprised how well it found these edges. And when I zoomed in, I could really tell that it, it did a pretty good job on it. So a uh, really nice job. Now it did select a couple areas that I didn't want it to. And right here, you're gonna see it created a new line for subject. And that is right there, I'll click on it. That is what is highlighted now. I can create multiple subjects. So I could add or I could subtract. So if it picked an area I didn't want, I could subtract that area away. So you could see right down in here, I can pick how I want that to take it away. So I'm gonna choose the brush and I'm simply gonna brush away this area up here that got selected. And then I'm gonna change my brush size a little bit and I'm also gonna highlight down here. And it's removing those, you can see it's in red. It's removing those areas as I brush them out. So I'm just gonna brush those areas out, pretty easy so far. So now I've created the brush and I've got my original subject down here. So pretty neat. Now I can create new ones. I can, I can make a new mask. So I can leave that mask number one and I can click up here and create a new mask. And I could now, let's say, select the sky or I could use one of the previous tools like the brush, the linear gradient or the radial gradient. I think they renamed the linear gradient. I thought that used to be called graduated filter, but I could be wrong on that. Okay, so pretty easy to see how this could be helpful. If I've created a really great selection, and what I look for when I make these adjustments are things called halos. I hate halos. I think it's a, a pretty easy sign to see when you've done editing that isn't, isn't well done, you'll see these halos around subjects. So if I increase the exposure, what I'm looking for is how well did that mask work and am I getting any halos? And I'm not really seeing any, maybe a little tiny bit right off the top, but only when I really increase the exposure. So. All of a sudden I can dial in exposure on my subject. I don't have to paint it in maybe with a brush like I may have used to do. Um, and I can adjust anything. I could also go in rather than just adjust things like exposure and contrast and shadows, I 
could come up here or down here to where it says sharpness and I could apply sharpening. And if again, if that mask is, is accurate, it's just going to apply sharpening to the subject and not the background, which is what I would want. So pretty helpful. Now I'm going to close this one down. I'm going to show you one more since I'm trying to do this um, quick and really just focus on those major changes. Uh, I'm going to pull up one that's going to be a little bit tougher. So this is a sparrow that I shot this morning, a white-throated sparrow. And I thought, wow, this one's going to be a little tougher. So this is in bridge right now. And I'm just going to go ahead and open it. And when it opens it into Photoshop, it's going to start. Uh, and you can program this or set this up how you want to. But it opens for me directly into Camera Raw because this is how I'm, this is my workflow. I start in bridge. I go to Camera Raw. Now on this one, I'm going to try the same thing. So I'm going to select the mask and I'm just going to see if it does it automatically and how well it does it. And the reason I think this one's going to be a little trickier is because of the depth of field. This one has the bill, the head, the eye are in focus. And then typical of my style of shooting, everything else is out of focus. So I was curious what it would do. And it's thinking, there it goes. Now, it has to end somewhere, right? And it did an amazingly good job. Look at the look at how refined this is on the edges. Like really, really impressive. The bills are pretty easy, but when you get into areas up here, they become a little bit more difficult and it does a really great job. So I'm going to go ahead and make some adjustments. And oh, by the way, this mask up here, uh, this will, this box, you can, uh, let me see, I believe you can unlock this as well. I'm going to hide the eye. There we go. So you can drag this. There we go. You can drag this anywhere uh, that you want, or you can lock it up. So I'm going to lock it there. I can check this on and off. So it's showing me the overlay. If I want to get rid of that, I can uncheck that. Also, as a shortcut, the Y button will toggle that on and off. So you can just hit the Y on the keyboard to toggle that on and off. And I am going to make some adjustments. So I know my mask is selected. And I'm going to start making some adjustments. Now with this one, because it's got this, um, a little bit of these out of focus foreground elements, probably bleeding onto the bird, you can notice it's a little bit washed out. So I'm going to use a couple tricks in here to bring that out. I'm going to pull up the exposure, just a hair, but I'm going to get into contrast and then whites and blacks. I'm going to pull these whites up and I'm going to pull these blacks down. But I'm going to do a little bit more of that down here where it says texture and clarity. So you'll see as I start to introduce these, that bird is going to get more contrast. I'm going pretty aggressive with these sliders. Dehaze is a really aggressive slider. But in applications where there's some of this haze or film over the subject, it works really, really well. It's, it's one of my favorite little tips to give to people. Um, on my Patreon account, by the way, I've covered this before and I cover it in a little bit more detail, but I'm going to give you a, a sneak peek of it here. And again, I'm looking for halos. I'm going to go back up to exposure and just play around a little bit more because, and you can see me going crazy with it, but I want to see how much of a is bleeding over and notice it's really not. So it did a really great job and that was a smart selection. I just clicked one button to make that mask. Is it a game changer? I don't know if it's a game changer, but it's a really great enhancement to Camera Raw in Lightroom. Uh, I can see myself using this in my workflow where I didn't normally use masks in Adobe Camera Raw. I would always do it on the Photoshop side. I can see an application now just because it's quick and easy. So uh, I'll toggle the before and after. You can see just with those slight adjustments, look how flat the image is, the subject, you know, getting some of that foreground. And then just after a couple quick tweaks, I mean, you're talking a minute, 30 seconds to make the mask add some quick adjustments, and I've already made a difference. Now, this is far from my final edit. I'll actually pause this. I'll play around in Photoshop. I'm going to enhance this a little bit. I'll like even do some digital magic, and I'll show you uh, kind of the final result right after this. So I did a few edits. Now, this is the raw file right out of camera. Uh, no adjustments made to it at all. And after editing it, I, I, I showed you the mask. I came up with something like this. And by the way, if you're interested in how I edit bird photography, some of my patrons are probably watching this and they're looking over there saying, oh yeah, I, I know what he did. I, I see how he does this. Um, but if you're interested in things like in improving your editing, 
or specifically how to um, take better bird photographs from behind the scenes and in the field, but also to the finished editing product, uh, check out my Patreon account. I do a lot of uh, teaching specifically around bird photography. When I brought this in with the mask applied, let me show you the difference. I went from here, I cropped it and composed it, but you can see it's just, and, and no other adjustments, that's just with the mask applied. Um, and then I built up all a bunch of layers. I hit a couple things. You could see I, I moved the background and manipulated it a little bit. Um, I don't generally alter my, sub well, I, I don't alter my subjects in photography, but because I shoot in a lot of tight habitats, I will clean up branches and, and do things like that. So I do these minor touch-ups and I teach all that on my Patreon account. So hopefully you liked the video and hopefully you found that mask tool helpful. Go in and play around with it. Make sure you update your Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom so that you can take advantage of that new feature. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. As always, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for your support. And I hope we can continue to find inspiration and in wildlife together.